Hello and welcome to a slightly different misplay. This time I'm not bringing you gameplay or arena runs or anything like that. I'm bringing you a little bit of discussion regarding the Curse of Next Ramus Adventure Mode, which of course is the first ever expansion for Hearthstone, which is coming some point soon. Now, I'm sure Blizzard have even more cards to reveal for this particular title, but they have revealed quite a few already, so I just kind of wanted to give my thoughts so far on the new cards that they've added, of course. I'm sure there will be more, so there'll probably be a follow-up video to this when they've released a few more enough to talk about. But I just wanted to do a little bit of a video to show you guys what they have already, my thoughts, and the potential plays that there could be. Now, of course, to mention every single possible play would be kind of well impossible um, as of course the combinations are pretty much endless with a game like Hearthstone but I think I want to focus on the combinations that would work with the cards themselves and just anything that pops into my mind and anything you guys want to add to the combinations you think of well I think that would be quite cool. Anyway, the first card is Baron Rivendare and it should be on screen. Now as you guys probably know, a lot of the next Ramus cards, pretty much all of them, have a death rattle or something to do with a death rattle. So this card could potentially be really, really powerful. Now it's a 1-7 for 4, which sounds terrible in terms of stats, and it's a legendary as you can see. But look at the text. Your minions trigger their death rattles twice, and... When you look at the amount of death rattles you could have on the board, that's kind of crazy. For example, my next card on screen is Dancing Swords, which is a 4-4 four, four for 3. And the death rattle here is your opponent draws a card. So that's a little bit of a downside. You wouldn't That's no synergy there. You wouldn't really want to have those two on the board at the same time. So you have to keep that in mind, of course. Not every death rattle is going to be good, of course, or is not necessarily always going to benefit you. For example, if you have a mind control minion, it's not necessarily anything be worth mind controlling, like, say, for example, um, Sylvanas Windrunner. So those two, no synergy at all. They actually work against each other, but it's still a 4-4 four, four for 3. Now, for example, um, Baron Rivendare would work much better with the Nerubian Egg, which of course is a 0-2, but you summon a 4-4 Nerubian on death. So while that's easily killed, of course, it doesn't actually benefit the opponent to kill it because, well, they didn't have a 4-4 to deal with. So basically, it would actually force a silence or maybe even a polymorph or something like that out of your opponent. As of course, silence is the only way to get rid of an enemy without it triggering the death rattle. Of course, if I kill it with a spell or whatever, it's going to summon the 4-4 Nerubian. And say, for example, if you have Baron Rivendare as well, then you get two 4-4 Nerubians because the death rattle triggers twice. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this the synergy that this, these cards have with each other. Now, this next one isn't a death rattle, but it's still a pretty OP card, or not OP, but powerful. The Shade of Nexramus is a 2-2 two, two for 3, which doesn't sound great, but then, again, the card text is stealth at the t start of your turn, gain plus 1, plus 1. Now, of course, because it has stealth, that means your enemy can't just ping it with, say, fireball, or hit it with their 2-2 two, two, or their 3-2, or whatever. Um... Because it, ha you know, they, you can't, they can't be attacked unless you take it out of stealth to attack. So it could literally sit there the entire game until it's like an 8-8, eight, eight, just for example. So it's quite a dangerous card. Again, silence possibly, um, something like that. It could really be powerful. And it may be nerfed, I don't know. But we'll have to see. I think there's some, so much potential for this card to be an absolute beast. And what you could even do is buff it up to, like, I don't know, just for example, a 4-4, four, four, attack with it, take it out of stealth, of course, but then use, like, Master of Disguise, if you're a rogue, to then take it back into stealth and maybe even heal it if you have something like a Voodoo Doctor or whatever. So there is potential there for some nice rogue play, even. Now, next up, we have the Undertaker, which, of course, will synergize with pretty much every card apart... Well, pretty much every card, not all of them, of course. Where whenever you summon a minion with Death Rattle, gain plus one, plus one. That is a one cost. It is a one-two. So it is quite easily killed, but 
that basically means you don't want to play this on turn one or two. You want to play it when it's say turn four. So you could play the Undertaker and then you play the Nerubian Egg and some of the other creatures that we have which I will discuss later. So basically, I think it's going to be a card that you play a slightly later in the game when you have more mana to play with, as of course, the more minions you summon, the more powerful it is. Because if you just play it and then you don't play anything else or you only play one minion, it's still going to only going to be a 2-3, which is too easily killed by pretty much in most two or three drops. It wouldn't be that difficult to get rid of. So I think while it's a one cost, it is more of a late game play just because of that synergy with the Death Rattle. Now the next card on our list is actually a druid um, only card, it's called Poison Seeds and destroy all minions and replace 2-2 two -two Treants to summon them. Now what's important to note here is that's all minions, not all enemy minions. That so if your enemy has anything on the board it will be replaced with a 2-2 two -two Treant. Now while that could be bad it could also be a sort of indirect form of removal or kind of a polymorph in a way. Say, for example, that your opponent has put onto the board something rather nasty, like, let's say, Ragnaros the Fire Lord, or Ysera, or, you know, something like that, Draxus, or whatever. Um, you get the idea. Some beastly legendary that's going to take quite a lot of work. Or even, say, like, you're facing another druid and they put down an Iron Bark Protector, or something like that. You could literally use Poison Seeds to turn that beast of a card into a 2-2. So it is pretty much like a slightly less powerful Polymorph, as of course Polymorph turns the, the um, creature into a 1-1. However, Polymorph is targeted. This is all minions. So obviously you don't want to play it when you have anything strong on the board. You want to play it if you, say, play a 1-1 or 1-2. Or even just a 2-2, two -two, so you're not even trading, you're just kind of changing your 2-2 two -two whatever creature for a 2-2 two -two Triant, and the opponent has had their big powerful stompy Iron Bark Protector or whatever, turned into a slightly less uh, impressive 2-2. Two -two. So the potential for this to be a massive troll card and quite annoying to deal with is quite high, and I actually am really warmed to playing the Druid recently. I think my Druid deck is one of my best that I've made. Although I've got some ideas for a good priest deck as well and I'm working on my paladin. I think this could really be cool and it's slightly darker side to the druid as well. Now next up we have a paladin only card which goes by the name of Avenge and it's a secret and is at one cost and the secret is when one of your minion dies, minion, minions dies sorry, give a friendly minion plus three plus two which is insanity. That could really be potentially used for something rather beastly. Like, let's say, for example, you've got a fairly mixed board. You've got one strong creature and one kind of meh creature. Obviously, if your opponent can take out the big strong creature, they're going to because, well, it's a threat. They don't want to take that eight damage or whatever to the face. So they get rid of it, and then all of a sudden that slightly measly creature is now a force to be reckoned with, and they probably use their whole hand, or their whole turn rather, to get rid of your big creature. So it's a way of really turning the tables and making you a little bit wary about going for the most obvious target when facing a paladin. So I really like that. I think that could really be awesome, and I think um, when it gets added into the game, Avenge is definitely going to be getting a place in my paladin deck. But we have um, another Death Rattle card here, as we have Anubar Ambusher, and it's a 5-5 five, five for 4, which is not too bad, and the Death Rattle is return a friendly minion to your hand. Now, that could potentially be good, but it makes it situationally useful and situationally useless, as of course, if you don't have another minion on the board, or you have a crappy minion where it doesn't benefit from that, for example, nothing with a battle cry or something like that, then, you know, there's no real need to return it to your hand. But let's say, for example, you have a um, Argent Commander and Anubar on the field, so then, of course, you know, if Anubar gets taken out, you, you could, say, pop the Divine Shield on the Argent, Anabar will die, and then your Argent gets put back in your hand, and then of course next turn you can play it again, now again with the Divine Shields. Now of course you can do that with the Youthful Brewmaster and Ancient Brewmaster cards, but still this is when Anabar dies, so 
if you have a battle cry minion on the board then it might be worth playing him as well because you get a, a pretty strong creature and it's just kind of a more a different way of doing the whole return a minion to your hand thing as of course it's usually a battle cry so it's nothing we haven't seen before of course with other cards but it is still has some cool applications now, we even have a new weapon coming in the Naxxramas expansion as our next card, as we have a 4-2 weapon. It's Death, Death Bite, rather, and it costs 4, and the Death Rattle is deal 1 damage to all minions, which is potentially really strong. So, you know, if, if you have minions on the board, then of course they could potentially take damage, but it's only 1 damage at the end of the day, but if you've worked your opponent's board down to, say, 1 health or even 2 health, this could be really useful to take everything down to a more manageable level. Of course, it does have a downside, as in you need to be careful as to when to play it, as it will damage all minions, not just all enemy minions. So it does have a slight double edge, if you will, despite definitely a double-edged weapon. Um, and it will hurt you if you aren't careful as to when you utilise it. And of course, death rattle in this case would mean when the weapon breaks. Now, a few people did ask um, the Hearthstone Facebook page when they revealed this card, will this death rattle still trigger if you get rid of it with, say, a Acidic Swampoos or Harrison Jones? And they confirmed, yes, it will, because the weapon is now destroyed and that counts as death. So the death rattle will still trigger. So there's not really any way to stop this death rattle from triggering, as, of course, you can't silence a weapon. So it's potentially quite annoying to play around and to deal with. And we actually now have a brand new card which was just announced at the time of recording. It is a two-cost card which is a shaman only card by the name of rebirth and the card text reads destroy a minion then return it to life with a full health so the potential for trolling with this particular card i say is too damn high and there are so many battle cry cards or death rattle cards that you could use this with and i think this actually have quite a bit of synergy with the nax ramus cards that of course have lots of cool death rattles and things like that so just for example you could use the nerubian egg it gets destroyed, summons a 4-4 Nerubian, and then, of course, comes back to life, and when that one dies, it will again summon a 4-4 Nerubian, or you could um, pair it with, say, Baron Rivendare, where the death rattle triggers twice, so you then have double, double, basically. Um, you could even, say, pair it with Sylvanas Windrunner, of course, with her battle cry, um, sorry, death rattle, not battle cry, of cloning an enemy minion. So the potential for this to be really annoying to deal with, especially when you think about the death rattle cards that have been added in Curse of Naxxramas, is too damn high, as I said. So quite a nice addition to the Shaman Reven uh, Retinue, rather, and could be rather interesting. So there you go, those are all the cards we have confirmed at the time of recording. So there you go, as I said, the potential for synergies with all sorts of cards is just way too high to go through all of them. I've just kind of spoken a little bit about potential synergies with the other cards revealed for the expansion and a little bit about previous, uh, um, previously included cards. But as I said, if you guys have any combinations that come to mind, as I said, the combinations are pretty much endless. I'd love to hear them, as of course, you know, we're not really going to know exactly how these work until we get our hands on them, but we can kind of get an idea if we know the game well. And I think I, felt, I know pretty well, but the real discovery comes from experimentation. But still, I'd like to hear some thoughts from you as what you guys think and what sort of plays you think we'll be seeing coming out of people in the future. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.